Well, a massive hello and welcome back to The Daily Brew, the devotional where every day we drink a new brew of coffee and we see what God is brewing for us in the Bible. Yes, it's cheesy, but it's true. And you're joining me here in Tauranga, New Zealand for another day of Bible reading. Day 254 of 365 days of Bible reading. And I'm so excited to have you here with me today. I've been hanging out with City Youth for the last few days at their camp and God has done absolutely amazing things. It has been such an honor to be here. Uh, and w- look, yesterday was awesome at church as well. It's been absolutely fantastic heading back home uh, today for some good times back home in Auckland. But we are here in Tauranga and we are having a brew while we're here. Before we get into that brew though, uh, I feel all out of it because I'm not in my normal position. Let's talk what scriptures we're going to be reading today. As always, they're in the descriptions on every platform. Psalm 106 verse 40 to 48. Second Corinthians chapter 12 verse 1 to 10. And Isaiah chapter 27 verse 1 to chapter 28 verse 29. So those are our scriptures that we're going to be reading today. Make sure you check those out in the descriptions on every platform and read them for yourselves. Now today our brew, and I'm just looking for it, is one of these capsule coffees because I'm in this lovely Airbnb here in Tauranga and they've given me an espresso machine with these capsules. It is the Law, L-O-R, coffee capsules this is the number 12 onyx which means it's going to be very very strong and i've done what all uh coffee drinkers strong coffee drinkers do i've put two of these capsules in which means it's a double shot each capsule represents one shot so here we go i'm going to give this a go for you today this is our first capsule coffee here on the daily brew let's see if this is going to become a trend as we move forward but let's give this a go i'll give you my honest feedback two of these help me lord Wow. Yeah, it's very strong. It's like a very strong instant coffee. It's not bad, but it's very, very strong. It definitely punches you right in the mouth uh, as you have it in the in the mouth. Look, in terms of cops, uh, copsule, in terms of capsule coffees, it's not too bad. I actually don't don't disenjoy this. Disenjoy. I enjoy it, uh, but it wouldn't be my go-to. So in terms of capsules, because it's the first one, I'm going to have to put it at a solid seven because. I haven't had any other capsule coffees. If I compare it to all the other coffees, it's definitely down uh, at a three. It's better than what we've been having in that gold packet the last few days. Oh my goodness, I can't even remember the name of it. Cita or something, I don't know. Anyway, that is it for the brews today. It's a little bit of a higgledy piggledy one because we're on the road, but who cares? We had some coffee on the road on the Daily Brew, and that I will take as a win. That is it for the brews. Let's get into the Bible, though, the real reason that we are here for today. Have you figured out God's grace yet? It's kind of a dumb question because it's not really something you can completely fathom. But it is it is one that is hard to comprehend in light of our sinful nature. And that's why it's not easy to fathom God's grace. And what we see in our psalm today is that God's people are stubborn in their sin. That's That one's a little bit more easy to fathom. This is how we can get though, isn't it? Bent on re- re- uh, rebellion and end up wasting away in our sin. But God's grace for us is a byproduct of the love that he has for us, regardless of our sinful nature. We see here that God saves them many times and that he hears their cry for help. God's love for you is great. We see that today in our psalm. And that's why it's always worth pausing and praising God. He is gracious and he is a faithful God. Maybe it's time to reevaluate where your life is in right now. Are you in the camp of rebellion and stubborn sin or are you in the camp of enjoying God's grace? I want to encourage you that if you can identify any sin that's still dwelling within you to arrest it quickly, run back to the Father because... Through Jesus' grace, we can progress to become more like him instead of parking in our sin. As I get older, I'm drifting away from the idea that I can impress people with my skills and that's what's going to really win them over. That's, That's the truth. As I get older, I'm realizing that actually all the stuff that I'm good at isn't actually that good really anyway And on the grand scheme of things. But I know that when I was younger, when I was in my early 20s, I used to think flexing my strengths to try and impress people and win people over was going to be the best thing that I could do. But now that I'm 30, I turned 30 this year at the time of recording, I'm so much more wiser. And what I've learned and what I really, what really what I'm saying is what I recognize is that being real, authentic and unafraid of my weaknesses is far more effective when it comes to connecting with people and when it comes to actually just being a human being. Paul models this so well. He isn't afraid of being vulnerable about his weaknesses. 
You have to understand how significant and amazing Paul is. Just look at the first seven verses in our passage today and just get a glimpse to see how great Paul's revelation of who God is. And the reason why this is important is because the magnitude of his revelation directly reflects the strength of his relationship with God. But Paul doesn't boast about these things. You'll notice that false teachers do, like the ones that are in the church at Corinth. Paul addresses this, that they tend to boast about their strengths. But Paul, he does something different. Paul, he boasts in his weaknesses. Paul talks about a thorn that's in his side. Now, this thorn is something that he says torments him. And we simply have no way of knowing what it was. There are some people out there who think they've figured it out, and that's cool. We, we just simply do not have any idea. But there are at least some, some smart person sat down and wrote down every legitimately possible thing that it could have been. And, and some people reckon there are about 36 things that it could have been. The truth is, though, is that we all have thorns. I know it. I have at least three thorns that constantly torment me that for whatever reason God hasn't taken away from my life. And the mistake that we make is trying to figure out what the thorns are. We spend so much time camping in what the thorns are and how hard they are to deal with. We put so much effort and energy into it. But the point of this is not to figure out what the thorns are. The point of this is twofold. The point of this scripture and the reason why Paul is showing us this is that number one, Paul is human with human struggles. We all have thorns. We're all human. We all have things that we have going on in our lives that can torment us at times. But the second thing that we see here is that God's grace is sufficient. And I love this. Pe people don't. That's the truth. People don't love the fact that God's grace is enough for the thorns because the logic goes, well, why doesn't a gracious God who just loves us take away the thorns in the first place? Why does he leave them? Well, if he took everything away and made everything perfect, there would be no need for him. There'd be no need for his grace. There'd be no need for his mercy. Everything would be perfect. But the encouragement is that while they are still there, God's grace for us, while we are in the middle of the struggles, will be enough for us. What I love is that Paul then says that God's power is made perfect in his weakness. And I know this to be true in my life. In my weakest moments, I need him more. I find more of his power in my weakest moments. I, I love this also because it's not my perfection that makes God good. It's my weaknesses. Because in my weaknesses, God has room to shine and flow through my life. So here's my question. Oh, in fact, before I ask you my question, let me say this. Because uh, I, I wrote this, I think it sounds good. This is, you, you could tweet this, this is good. I find that in my humanity is what drives me to his majesty. In my humanity, the, the, the sooner I can realize how human I am, the faster I'm driven towards his majesty. Maybe it's not as tweetable as I thought, but anyway. What if you stopped cursing the things that you hate about you? Your supposed weaknesses, the things that make you fail and fall short, the things that torment you. What if you stopped cursing them and you started thanking God for his grace and mercy and his power that's made perfect in your weakness? I said it already that God's grace is an extension of his love for you. And in Isaiah today, we see this reference of how we're a vine and God takes care of the vine. He, he waters it. He tends to it. He cares for it. I got given a lemon tree by mum and dad as a gift last year. And I haven't cared for a plant really ever in my life like I have until I got this lemon tree. But when you love something, you take good care of it. God, in his love for you, takes care of you. Part of his love, though, is his judgment. Because without his judgment, he wouldn't be a just God. When I had a dog, we trained the dog and we put restriction and rules and discipline around the dog, not because we wanted to discipline the dog and make the dog feel bad. We loved the dog and we wanted to keep the dog safe. So we, took, we, we put boundaries on it, we taught it, and we trained it to obey. And God, in the same way, he does the same thing to us. Isaiah says that he pulls out the thorns and the thistles, that he actually removes the weeds from in and around our lives. Now, if we are weeds, because he's talking about people, so if we are weeds, if we're the thorns and the thistles, that's when we are those who do not love God and follow in his ways. Because what weeds do is they choke the life from the things that are around them. And if we're those kinds of people, God will ultimately remove us from being around others, from having that life for ourselves. Well, what we see here today, though, is that it doesn't end well for us if we are those types of people. Isaiah 28 tells us about the drunkards, people that are driven by their pride. We see that they're ultimately going to be trampled underfoot. These are people that do not love God. These are people that ultimately on judgment day will find themselves cast out and thrown 
away. The, the description here that Isaiah gives us is re- very reminiscent of our world today. And we need to make sure that we're not those living in a way that drives us closer to sin, but rather living a life that drives us closer to salvation and to the Savior. Please take note as well of the scoffers that, who rule in Jerusalem. God is not okay with cynicism and mocking language. Finally, I want to draw your attention to verse 28, 16. It's going to come up on screen. It says this. This is what the sovereign Lord says. See, I lay a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a stone, a precious cornerstone for a sure foundation. The one who relies on it will never be stricken with panic. This is another prophetic word about who Jesus is for us. He is the precious cornerstone, our firm foundation, and anyone who relies on him will never be stricken with panic. Friend, today I want to encourage you that it was his grace that empowered Jesus to endure the cross. And it's his grace that allows us to rely on him and never be stricken with panic either. So today I want to encourage you, be grateful for God's grace. Three, two, Verse one. of the day. Verse of the day today, Isaiah 28, 29 says, All this also comes from the Lord Almighty, whose plan is wonderful and whose wisdom is magnificent. I want to encourage you to never forget, always remember, God's plan is wonderful and his wisdom is magnificent all day every day and that is it for the daily brew thank you so much for joining me today for 254 that's our day number today day 254 days of bible reading thank you so much for joining me no matter where you are around the world i pray that god speaks to you today and reveals to you more about himself as you go on this journey that is it though for today a massive thank you to all of you on spotify apple podcasts for following the podcast and rating it and to you on youtube if you've subscribed already and clicked the bell so you never miss a devotional thank you so much for doing that as well if it is day number one for you head back to day number one and start this bible reading journey from scratch allow the bible to build on itself day after day after day thank you so much for joining me today in Tauranga we'll see you tomorrow for another day of the daily brew if it is the start of your day have a great rest of your day unless it's sleep time good night sleep tight and we'll see you back here tomorrow for day 255 of 365 days on the daily brew